All right, and welcome back to the Rotan Brew Show here at the Wave 101.1 FM, the new official broadcasters of Voice of America for the Bay Islands and Northern Honduras. So we've got three young gentlemen here from an organization called CANFF. We've got Jason, Jason Old, Tony Rosado, and Patrick Dunnigan. They are here representing this organization that I have a feeling, guys, has to do with soccer. Yeah. Yes, sir. Okay. All right. So come on in. Join the... Uh, uh, thank you guys for coming. And uh, first, you know what? Tell me a little bit about each one of you guys, uh, where you're from. And then I'm going to ask the last person, who, uh, after he tells us about where he's from, how this all, how your organization got started. So let's start with you, Jason. My name is Jason Old, and uh, we all, all of us happen to live together uh, in the same city in Tampa, Florida. And uh, I personally, outside of playing soccer all the time, I, I teach at a, at a youth, uh, private university that's in Lakeland, Florida. It's called Southeastern University. And um, so as I, I spend most of my time teaching college students Spanish, Spanish literature, and uh, humanities courses. And then outside of that, I, I spend the rest of my time playing soccer and trying to figure out how uh, we can grow the soccer foundation down here to influence more kids in, in the sense of um, using the sport as a way for uh, to promote sport and development and, and upward mobility throughout underprivileged communities in this area. Perfect. Just what we need. And next we have Tony. Tony, tell us about where you're from and a little bit about your background and how you got together with these guys. Hi, how's everybody doing? My name is Tony Rosado. Um, I was actually born in Maryland, but I uh, ran into this guy, Jason, over in Tampa. I went to, I went to school at the University of South Florida, and that's where um, I played, played a little bit of soccer there and um, got involved with him. Got to come to the island about two years ago, and uh, that's kind of where uh, we started um, just playing soccer on the island and uh, enjoying it. And um, yeah, I've been playing soccer ever since I was like five years old. and. Uh, Love it, um, and yeah, well, and uh, still, still going to school over there in the University of, of South Florida. Definitely a new generation of guys to hear Americans talking about playing soccer since they've been five. You know, the United States is a place where kids play baseball, so this is really interesting to see the uh, the new generation coming up and playing uh, soccer their whole lives. Pat, tell us a little bit about you and how you got involved with these guys. Yes, sir. My, uh, as uh, Bruce was saying, my name is Patrick Dunnigan, and I, I'm actually a graduate of the University of Florida. I've uh, got to give a shout-out and say go Gators while we're uh, live streaming here. But, uh, you know, I, I ran into Jason, you know, uh, through, through mutual friends in Tampa and really became inspired by the work that uh, Jason and Tony have been doing down here in Ro Roatan. And, uh, you know, I, I've always believed that, you know, soccer can be used as a platform to really do a lot of good throughout the world, especially in uh, communities, um, you know, like we live in here in uh, Roatan, where we, uh, where you have a lot of youth that, you know, get, you know, get involved in drugs and, and life in the streets, and you know, there's a high teenage pregnancy, and, and I think that through soccer we can use that to promote education, to pro to promote. A bunch of public health initiatives and, and really you know raise the standard of living here and give these kids an avenue um, you know that, that they haven't had before and so you know when, when I found out about what Jason and Tony had been doing you know I, I felt compelled to, to try to get involved and come down here and, uh, and and take it in all in for myself and and, and get on board and, and really try to continue to make a difference in these these young children's lives okay uh, my, no, my mic. Hello, Mike. Mike, one. Come in. Come on back. On. I have to literally scream at this mic every once in a while to get it going. Okay, so tell me about some of your successes that you've had uh, up in the States. And I know you've been down here for a, a while, Jason. I know you've been visiting Roatan for many years. And tell me a little bit about some of what has already gone on here with your group okay well yeah just I guess before I before I answer that question directly I should indirectly answer it by by answering the question of why I even came down here in the first place um, actually I've been coming back and forth uh, to Roatan for approximately seven years now uh, I, I originally came down here to uh, work with an organization who is now a partner and affiliate of ours uh, intensive heart ventures and I also was down here playing soccer for uh, and a team that was 
federated with the National League here on the island. And uh, so I've, I've been in, integrated with the community, playing soccer in the, in, here in the stadium uh, and, and traveling to other parts of Honduras. Um, so basically it came to a point where I realized that there is a, a great need here for uh, upward mobility and just change in general. And, um, and that was one of the, the proponents that uh, not only compelled me, but propelled me as well to, to start what is now the Can Football Foundation. Um, in, in Tampa, uh, in, in terms of our, our affiliations in the United States, we work with the United States Soccer Foundation. They've, they've donated equipment to us. We, um, we work with a, a club in Tampa called Hillsborough County United Soccer Club, who's been a really big partner. And uh, we're really thankful for their efforts as well. Um, you know, we, we've worked, as I say, we've, we've, the, the university where I work has supported us. And also where uh, I studied, I went to grad school at the University of South Florida, where Tony is currently studying. Uh, they, they've been a big support in terms of um, facilitating uh, fundraising events in the, for us in the future. And they're just, they're on board with all that. Um, so that, that having been said, the, what we're doing from the United States angle is not only bringing about awareness, but using that as a platform to get equipment, to get donations, and to really let people know what's going on down here. Uh, in terms of our success down here, what's what's been going on is uh, we use uh, the concept I, I consider it's sport and development. So what that means is we're using a sport, in our case soccer, uh, to promote other facets of personal development, be it education, public health, AIDS awareness, and other other facets of uh, of, of the people's lives around here. Um, we what we in terms of our success last march i was here and we brought a big shipment down for uh, to give away awards and, and ultimately to meet immediate needs of the of the players and who we would refer to as student athletes um, and you have to hold at least an 85% in your academic standing in order to win a uh, a prize and that entails winning cleats shorts you know basically what we would consider basic necessities to even play soccer you know we're trying to keep these kids from uh, playing barefoot or playing in their school clothing and uh, just ultimately give them uh, the, the, the immediate needs and the necessities to develop athletically and how do we promote that well as, as I've said by holding a high academic standard and putting these standards on them to perform academically we're able to bridge that gap and say okay as students, if you meet these certain requirements or standards, then you can you will then win a prize and receive these um, these implements. And in in reality, a lot of us, I think I think we're in, we we would all agree that they're kind of doing it for the gear, but indirectly they're learning, and that's the more important part. And I think we would all unanimously agree on that as well. That the education part of it is much more important than the than the athletic side. But to bridge those, to bridge that gap, and to, to create that unity between the two is is what we want to do. Now, in terms of the teams, we want to fully uniform the teams. We want to outfit them so that they can continue to to, to grow as a team, and that we want to meet the needs in, in terms of their team needs as well. Uh, for example, uh, two of our teams just came back from the mainland, where our under 16 girls team was national champs, and now in September they have to go to Costa Rica and play. Our under-16 boys team took second place. I mean, and we're talking second place in the whole country. Uh, that's that's an amazing feat. Now, the, the funny part about that is when they went into the finals, these two teams are sharing uniforms. So after a game, they would pass the sweaty uniform to the next next team. They show up for the final, and the teams they're playing are decked out, you know, top-notch Nike uniforms, cleats, playing on beautiful grass fields, and they're looking at, at our teams kind of like, how the heck did you make it to the final? And, fair, huh? Yeah, and and little did they know they you know ended up going there. Those teams that were decked out went home with second place. You know, for in terms of the in, in terms of the girls and uh, the guys took second overall. But nevertheless, it's just a it's just an amazing testimony to um, the talent that's here. And all they all they need is is some type of support uh, in terms of equipment. So I, I think I think I answered that question a little. Tell me a little bit about this the uh, successes 